sometimes technology is totally epic and sometimes it's a big pain in the butt. All right, can you see and hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Nice. Woo! Finally, technology. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, the link's there. You gave me the link. You should be able to click on that and just be here. Yeah, gotta love it. <laughs> All right. Good to see you, Jay. Welcome to the call, man. Happy to be here, man. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you. So let's start off with your story. Where did you start out? What like tell the tell the world what technology is totally epic and sometimes it's a big pain in the butt. Okay, so um, my basic story. Let's let's start at the beginning. Um, All right, can you see and hear me? Yeah, I hear you. I kind of grew nice. up in food. Um, let's, let's pause for just a second here. Okay. Woo! Finally, technology. We might both need to get a headset in. I'm not sure. Yeah, it means there. You might be. You should be able to click on that and just be here. Mm -hmm. You got that away too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good to see you, Jay. Welcome to the call, man. Happy to be here, man. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Glad to have you. So let's start off with your story. Where did you start out? Hang on. Okay, is that better? Yes. Okay, perfect. Was that just playing? No, that was on my end. That was the, yeah, that was a lag on my end, so. Got it. Again, love technology. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Thanks. so. Um, Starting with my story, uh, I kind of grew up in food. My dad, uh, I mean, since before I was born, has been in food. He does institutional food, which is, uh, you know, cafeterias, hospitals, uh, college campuses, things like that. Food on a massive scale. And from a really, really young age, I just, I fell in love with his kitchens. You know, I mean, I remember five, six years old going into these kitchens where, I mean, if, if you can conceive of a kitchen that produces between three and 5,000 meals a day, I mean, you're talking like 200-gallon stock pots, massive steam tables, people talking in nine different languages, and it was just, it was a magical place to me. I fell in love with the hustle and bustle of the kitchen from a very, very young age, um, and I knew that food was what I wanted to do. So when I was 14, um, I lied about my age on an application. I told them I was 15, so I could get hired as a dishwasher, um, which, it's the lowest of the low. I mean, you got to start somewhere, but dishwasher is, it's shitty work. It, it's hot, it's sweaty, it's, it's just, it's gross work. Um, and I loved it. You know, I was a dishwasher for about a year and a half at the restaurant I was at, worked my way up over the course of about eight years until I was at um, a restaurant here in Salt Lake called The Lion House. Uh, mostly they do receptions and things, but at the time I was running a, uh, a, a prime rib and seafood buffet on their weekends, Friday and Saturday nights. And I did that for a couple years. Uh, when I was, I don't know, 22, 23-ish, uh, I looked around at all of my friends, you know, from high school and everything, and they were making decent money doing what they were doing, and I was making like this much above minimum wage, um, you know, because food service industry, by and large, doesn't pay well. And so I decided, you know what, I'm done with food. So I uh, decided to go into corporate America, and I did a lot of things. You know, I worked for, uh, I was in UPS management for several years. Um, I worked for the Ritz-Carlton Hotel Company for quite a few years as well. Uh, some tremendous experiences, uh, but coming up on my 40th birthday, I just, I don't know, I, I wanted something more, you know. I didn't hate what I did, but I didn't love it, you know. I mean, I liked the people I worked with and everything was fine, and I had a pretty decent lifestyle. Um, you know, nothing extravagant, but I, I was doing okay. But I, I wasn't passionate about it, and I just really, really wanted to do that, and so... Through working with one of my mentors, I, I came to a point where it's like, you know what, let's get back into food. And at the time, my belief structure was, okay, getting back into food means that I'm going to take a huge pay cut because food pays shitty. Uh, it means all this route because you were passionate, so you're like, okay, I'm not fully fulfilled. I've been chasing money. I've been looking at all these other avenues, and now I'm ready to do what I love. Yeah, that's that's really the point that I came to, and. and I, I was at the point where it's like, you know what, regardless of the cost, I'm all in here. Burn the ships in the fucking harbor. I mean, this is, you know, I could lose my marriage. I could lose my house. I could lose my car. I mean, everything, very sincerely, was at risk here. And I did it anyway. It's like, you know, I don't care. I, this is the course I'm going on. I know that this is my passion. This is where I'm going regardless of what happens. Uh, you know, whatever the cost is, I'll pay it. Um, That's a huge leap, man. Put everything all in on the line. 
But it, it was scary too. I'm not gonna lie. It wasn't something that I you know came to light and I was like, oh hey, let's just do this. It was <laughs> you know there was a lot of sleepless nights and a lot of stress. Um, but I ended up working at uh, the Metropolitan here in Salt Lake City, which for 15 years was the crown jewel of Utah's fine dining scene. I mean, I was like, the truth is, everybody else in that place had culinary degrees, had tons of experience. They were like, I felt just completely out of place there. Uh, my first couple shifts crashed and burned. I mean, people shoving me out of the way and taking over my station because I couldn't keep up. And I just, I really thought like, you know what, I'm, I made a bad decision here. You know, maybe I can get my old job back. This is... You know, this is not working out the way I thought it would. And the truth is, at that point, I was making eight fifty an hour. You know, which, you know, forty years old making a high school kid money. That's you know, that's a blow to your ego and your pride. So, um, what were you making? What exactly were you doing before this leap, and what were you making? Um, before this leap, I was uh, right before I got back into food. I was uh, working with uh, a company called uh, True Credit, doing credit repair, um, and I was making. I don't know, uh, forty-five, fifty thousand a year. You know, nothing extravagant, but a nice living. You know, yeah. Um, and so it was. It was about a sixty-five percent pay cut. You know, to get back into food and, and making eight fifty an hour. Uh, in fact, when I uh, after the interview I, and on the drive home, I called my wife and I said, "Hey, you know, I got the job." And she's like, "Great. How much does it pay?" And I kind of sheepishly told her, "Eight fifty. And she started to cry because our kid made more money at that time than I did. You know. Ooh. So I mean, that's. Yeah, that's demoralizing to say the least, you know, but I knew it was something that I wanted and it was something that I, I just, I had to do it. Um, and so the 8.50 an hour was okay with me and I did that for almost a year uh, until the Metropolitan closed down. Now when the Met closed down, um, it was basically the owner had just decided she was done owning a restaurant, gave us two weeks notice and I mean that was it, the restaurant was closed. Um, a couple things happened at that point and things started to move very, very quickly. Uh, I had a friend call me who owns a restaurant uh, about 45 minutes north of here, and he's like, look, we just had to fire our, our executive chef because of drugs and stuff. Are you interested in the position? Now, it was a big step up from line cook making 850 to executive chef making, you know, 55000 a year. Um, but, you know, I, I'm like, look, I, I have the skills. I know how to food cost. That's just math. I know how to manage a team. I learned that at UPS. I mean, I have all the skills to run a restaurant. I just I've never done it all at once before. So if you be patient with me, I'll be patient with you, and we'll turn this restaurant into something special. Um, and again, it was it was tremendously overwhelming. You know, now managing being responsible for you know this team of you know sixty employees, front of house, back of house, trying to coordinate everything and all these different personalities. And more often than not, on the drive home, I mean, I would be just in tears, you know, and I'd call my wife to talk me off the ledge. I'm like, I think they got the wrong guy. Like, I don't know if I can do this. This is, like, so far beyond my scope of, you know, what I'm used to. This is, I don't know, man. Maybe I'm the wrong guy. And and God bless her. She would talk me off the ledge, and she's like, no, you can do this. You you, you know what you're doing. Just be patient and weather the storm. Um, and within about five, six months, I would kind of expanded my skill set in a very radical fashion and gotten to a point where I was very, very comfortable running that kitchen and doing what I do. Um, at the same time I started working there, I had a friend who teaches at the oh, University of quick, yeah. What a tremendous blessing to have a wife. There's, there's such incredible power in having someone speak into your strength and to seeing who you really are and believing in who you really are and being able to support you how many times do people meet that resistance, not have that support, instead oftentimes have the other side like, yeah, maybe you should quit, and then settling, not following your passion. So not only did she support you to take the leap and stand by your side, but then she talks you through and supports you and loves you and supports you through and speaking power into you. Such a tremendous gift that makes all the difference in the world and uh, some key insight into the importance of the environment that you're in and who you're surrounded with and who you choose to be in relationship to and how that affects your success. So just want to take a minute to acknowledge all of that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I mean, and just to that point, you know, Megan, my sweetheart, has been absolutely key to me getting to where I am today, you know, and, and that love and support wasn't always the pretty flowery, you know, oh, you can do it, rah, rah, you know, sometimes it was like, look, you got to provide for the family, step the fuck up and do this. Yeah. You know? And so, I mean, God bless her for being that woman that, you know, was willing to take those stands and really support me, you know, whether it was pretty or ugly and, and get me to where I am today, you know. 
Um, it was yeah. It's I, I I'm tremendously fortunate to have her at my side. That's just the truth. So. Uh, so uh, yeah, so teaching at the University of Utah. So I had a friend who's a nutritionist uh, at the uh, College of Health, Department of Nutrition. Um, her and I have known each other for the better part of a decade, and she's been kind of my nutrition mentor over the years. I, I'm just always fascinated by the things that I learned from her about nutrition, the human body, and food, and psychology of it. It's just she's a great person to have in your corner. Uh, but she approached me. She's like, "Hey, you want to teach a class with me this fall?" And I'm just like, "Well, you know, I mean, I just lost my job at Demet. Sure, why not?" So it was one class uh, on Mondays. Basically, uh, the title of the course is Cultural Aspects of Food. And my job was to simply cook food from around the world, allow the students to experience food from other cultures, and maybe teach them a few cooking skills along the way so they can stop eating ramen and Kraft Mac and cheese. Um, after the first semester, uh, 60 students, uh, tremendous success. The second semester, like as we were starting out, we had um, 82 students registered. And we had another hundred some odd on a waiting list, and about half of those showed up to the first day of class trying to get into the class. So it just it kind of exploded on us. And at one point, we had a, a, a three-year waiting list to get into the class. Holy uh, God. Yeah. So it, and you know, so there's a hunger for this kind of information out there. So after I'd been at the uh, the restaurant up in Ogden for uh, close to a year, the U of U came to me and it's like, look, this is a popular enough course. We'd like to expand it. You're only teaching one day a week right now. We'd like to expand that to you know three, maybe four days a week. Uh, and I said, okay, here's the deal. I mean, I, I chef up at this restaurant six days a week. Here's how much they're paying me. Okay, in order for me to come work here basically full time, um, this is the number that I need. And they said, okay, awesome. Uh, we can give you 25% of that. And so I said, okay, great, let's do it. Seventy-five <laughs> percent pay cut again. My wife's like, you, "Can we pl please play doing this?" You know. <laughs> Either you're you're incredibly good at following your heart, or else you're not good at math, or else you're not good at negotiation <laughs> skills, or a combo of the three, huh? It's probably a combo. Um, <laughs> so started at the U, you know, taking that huge pay cut, and figured, you know what, I can fill this in with, uh, you know, some catering gigs and things like that. It gives me a lot more freedom to go out and, and flexibility to start pursuing some of these other revenue streams and just really doing what I love, you know, and, and kind of freeing me from the mindset that in order to be in food, I had to make shitty money and I had to work nights, weekends, and holidays. And I, it was long hours, you know, freeing me from all of that, you know, taking that, that mindset and completely just disposing of it and taking the stance of, you know what, food can be whatever I want it to be. You know, there's so many other things out there besides being the executive chef and having that title, running a restaurant or owning a restaurant or, you know, it doesn't have to be any of those things in order for me to live my passion. Because you know, really when it comes down to it, my passion is about the food, you know, not necessarily the, the setting that that is in. Yeah. Um, well, this was the big transition from really moving outside the box of traditional what's possible for a chef and really starting to move out of the job mentality into the, the creator, entrepreneur, uh, self-employed type of situation is that right exactly exactly you know so I really started you know just through Facebook uh, had a huge following started promoting you know hey I'm doing catering now I'm doing you know and started filling in doing some uh, summer parties things like that which I love doing I have a great time doing them I still have I, I mean you I do probably two or three events like that a month um, and I love doing them you know that's just that's the fun stuff for me uh, but at the same time I had a nutritionist from the U contact me and she's like, look, I'm working with a client right now, okay? Him and his wife, they're both doctors up at the U Medical Center. They don't have a lot of time. Um, he needs to lose about 60 pounds. She's a triathlete, so she's, I mean, she's pretty good about eating what's good for her and things like that, but they want somebody to cook their food for them. They're, neither one of them cook really well, neither one of them really interested in, hand, they just, they need somebody to handle their food for them. Is that something you can do? Sure, why not? Uh, so, uh, sat down and talked with them, you know, find out likes, dislikes, food allergies, things like that, nutritional requirements. Um, I got a lot of their macronutrient data from the nutritionist and just started doing five lunches, five dinners, dropping them off in a cooler once a week. Uh, so they had food and they handled their own food on the weekends. Um, and it was an extra thousand dollars a month, you know, uh, just feeding them. And so that was great. Uh, you know, had a, had a great time doing that and, an extra thousand dollars each month doesn't suck, uh, and so I had them for about a year and a half, almost two years, before you and I first met. Um, 
you know, got connected through uh, through Garrett White, and you know, when we had our first conversation, uh, you completely opened my eyes to some possibilities with that. You know, we talked about a lot of things like, what are you doing now? Oh, I teach it to you, and I, you know, cater, and I got this little thing over here on the side, this personal chef thing that's, you know, that it's just there, you know, and that's for whatever reason, that's the one that you latched on to, and you're like, okay, you know, we ran through some math really quick, and I just this light bulb went on, and it's like, hey, wait, this could be like a money maker right here, you know. Uh, it won't be that hard to get a couple more clients on there and double, triple, even quadruple my income just through growing this really, really easily. And, you know, so over the past five months, you know, before I even started working with you as a mentor, just a few conversations we've had, that's, that's the route that I've taken. And it's been just a phenomenal ride, you know. So right now I've got um, – a little more than a dozen clients, uh, you know, that I cook for, and they love the food. It's tremendously convenient for them. I've got clients that are professional athletes. Uh, I actually just got back from cooking for the U.S. ski team in Vail um, for the past 10 days. Um, but I've got triathletes. I've got professional football players, and they're, they have very specific nutritional requirements, and they count on me, and they trust me to give them the food they need to perform at their – Absolute best. I mean, that's you know, that's where they make their money is using their body machine. And yeah. So it's up to me, and they entrust me to make sure that that is in peak condition always. Uh, you know, so I, I feed those people. I've got other people that, you know, their weight loss clients is is the bottom line. They want to get their bodies in shape, and so they trust me to give their body the nutrients that they need to get to a healthy physical weight. Uh, yeah. You know, whatever that is for them. Um, I have a dietitian on staff that works very, very closely with me and my clients to make sure that every week those clients are getting exactly what they need so that they're, they've got more energy, they've got you know, improved mental acuity, and the pounds are coming off. They lose on average about one to two pounds a week, so it's not like a South Beach diet, you know, quick weight loss, anything like that. It's really a, a, a shift in lifestyle. You know, we work on their mindset and, and get them just to a place where it's like they're looking at food through a whole different set of, uh, you know, a whole different uh, lens and how it relates to their life and their job and their relationships and how it affects everything. Um, and they have had some tremendous success with them. And so, I mean, as we're getting close to the end of the year, I mean, a lot of people, their business slows down this time of year. For me, this is, you know, probably my busiest season, you know, where I'm getting people into shape for the holidays, you know, where uh, they don't have to worry about, you know, gaining 15, 20 pounds over the holidays because of how they eat or what they eat. You know, it's, it's just a much healthier approach. And it's, they don't even have the cravings. It's not like this willpower battle for, yeah. oh, you know, I can't eat that, and that's a bad food. You know, it's, it's the work we do really gets them into a mindset of, yeah, I know what's going to be best for my body, and that's what's important to me. And so those are the choices I'm going to make. Beautiful. So some of the themes, you know, that I'm seeing here are you followed your heart, you followed your passion, you 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 tried other things, but it didn't really work out, and you felt an emptiness or an incompletion inside, and so you followed your heart, and there came a turning point where you sought mentorship, you got some guidance, mm -hmm. and you were able to see things that you had never seen before. So after meeting me and us having a few conversations over the course of those five months, um, what are some of the key breakthroughs and realizations and turning points that made the biggest difference for you to open up to a whole new world of possibility that was beyond anything you'd ever considered before? Well, the first one was just realizing that possibility was out there. I, I had never even looked at the personal chef thing as, you know, this can be my bread and butter and can really take me to six figures. I mean, that's territory I've never been to before, you know. So that was huge. Um, I, I would chalk that up to just a mindset shift. You know, letting go of the, okay, if you're going to be in food, this is, you know, you have to make shitty money and you have to work shitty hours and that's that's what being in food is, you know, and it's not, you know, that's, in fact, even when I got to be executive chef, which is what I thought I wanted, you know, I mean, you start out as line cook, you work your way up to executive chef and that's, you know, that's the be all end all, you know, until you open your own restaurant. When I got to be executive chef, I wasn't doing a whole lot of cooking, you know, it was all paperwork and team management and I just, and that's not what I wanted. You know, yeah. some people like that and love that, and that's their passion. Cool. Not mine. I like cooking. I like my hands on the food. You know, that's the part that I love. Uh, and so letting go of that mindset and just being open to what came really put me in a position to love everything about what I do. I mean, once a week, I get to 
cook from scratch awesome meals using local produce and local proteins and just give my clients some of the best food on the planet and I love that you know that's that's really what just lights me up so I love your passion and um, so keys here following your heart getting mentorship and then uh, you just saw all these new possibilities now as you launched it and you saw the new possibilities what um, I had this awesome thought and it slipped my mind so it, the, what I'm saying right now isn't as cool as it was gonna be what <laughs> but as you moved into this and you saw the new possibilities you started expanding into that then what then it was just time to do the work you know and and you know just working with you it, it hasn't always been pretty or awesome lots of times it's been scary you know it, I just there have been a couple of times where I've just reached out to you and be like, okay, you know, you said to take this step. And I mean, it makes sense in my head, but Jesus, this is scary, man. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I could lose everything based on this one decision. You know, yeah. I'm happy with where I'm at now and I would be happy to just continue doing what I'm doing right now and stay at this plateau. Yeah. You know, but at the same time, I mean, now that I've seen that vision, I mean, I hunger for more. I, you know, I just, I've got to get there. Uh, yeah. And so, all right, you know, I've taken risks before. I've taken leaps before. Let's do it, you know. And so it's a lot of it has been trust in your mentorship and just, all right, let's go for it, you know. Let's do the fucking work. Yeah. Um, you know, you said to me a, a, a couple months back when we were together, um, you know, if, if I'm going to be the guy that's talking about nutrition and health and stuff, i got to get my body in shape, you know. I was a little overweight and, you know, not eating uh, the way that I know my body wants to or needs to, you know, really not walking – the walk of what I was talking, you know, and you just pretty much called me on the carpet for it. And, you know, since that point, uh, I'm down another 10 pounds, uh, you know, up to my workouts with my personal trainer and getting in really, really good shape. So thanks for that. Gladly, brother. So being willing to take those risks has been critical. Being willing yes. to be open to feedback has been critical. Being willing to step outside your comfort zone has been critical. Being willing to go from good to great and take that scary leap over and over and over again has been critical. Um, what advice would you have for other people? So Al, the thing I was going to say earlier, I remember now, people always believe that you know artists starve. They believe that, that you know if you follow your heart, you follow your passion, you'll be broke. Well, the reason why is only if those people suck at marketing, they suck at sales, and they suck at understanding how to solve someone's problem with their solution, with their passion and purpose. So if we just follow our heart and we don't combine that with the proper knowledge and skill sets and systems to truly solve a problem in the marketplace, to truly serve people in a way that they're willing to pay for, you could have a passion for food and think and believe that you have to sacrifice and work in a kitchen your whole life. Another person could have a passion for painting and try to follow the traditional painting model and be a broke, starving artist, just like so many starving artists are. There's a million ways. I know people who were passionate about golf, but there's no way they were ever going to be a professional golf player. And so they ended up inventing, you know, golf trinkets and things and became retired off of inventing a cool, fun novelty item based on golf. Mm -hmm. And so no matter who I've worked with over the years, I've found over and over and over again that there is always a way to take your passion and make it profitable. But if you approach it from your current mindset and your current level of skill sets and your current environment, you almost never make it. So you changed several things. You up-leveled your environment. You reached out for help and gained new skill sets on how to market, how to sell, how to package, how to structure. Uh, you gained new mindsets on your value, your worth, and could it happen and all these other things. So if you were to give advice to all these other people out there who maybe are in a job or you know are in a career that's not fulfilling and they have this passion, they have this deeper purpose, they have this thing that drives them from within, but they have a belief for a story that they can't thrive and they can't make money doing what they love, what are the key points you would share with them that you've picked up on this journey that's enabled you to go from where you were to where you are? Well, you know, I think it comes down to those three things that you mentioned. I mean, it's very clear to me that, you know, without those skill sets, mindsets, and environmental changes, you know, I'd still be stuck where I was. And so it's really just a willingness to 
anything that you currently believe about where you're at, let go of it. You know, be willing to just step outside that box and you know, just question everything about it. Because until you develop, you know, I mean, until I was able to work with you and shift those mindsets, you know, and realize, okay, there's some skill sets that I've got to get here in order to get my business from where I'm at now to where I can see it being. You know, yeah. I see the vision there. So, okay, shift the mindset, got the vision. You know, get the skills that I need to get there. You know, the sales and marketing, tremendous weakness of mine at one point. You know, now it's, you know, I mean, that's still something that I work on, but it's, it's something I know to work on. It's a skill set that I know needs improving, you know. And my environment has completely shifted. You know, even just, you know, I, I do most of my marketing and contacts through Facebook. And so just shifting that environment, you know, going through my friends list and, and being very, very clear on who I want to surround myself with, adding the people that are going to support me, you know, getting rid of the people who, you know, don't, you know, just very carefully cultivating that environment, you know, and the people that I surround myself with, you know, my, my sous chefs, my line cooks, you know, the people who support me in doing what I do, you know, I couldn't execute the, the volume that I do now without some of them in place, you know. So making sure to have those key people, not just a warm body, but the right people in place to support me doing everything that I do, you know, and that's, from where I'm sitting right now, that's going to be the next big leap is, you know, kind of delegating some of that and stepping on to the next big step for me and trusting that I've got the right people in place to handle some of those, those uh, you know, day-to-day -day things. Beautiful. So applying all of that and projecting forward. So... We've got you on track to that six-figure income. You're getting very close to having that be a consistent and regular thing. Uh, what do you see as next to bring this to seven figures? I know this is you haven't prepped for this question, and I know that a lot of those answers lie over here, but I want you to just kind of live right here, right now. Think, knowing what you know and seeing what you see right now, what's next in order to make that, that next leap to be able to have plenty of time have the lifestyle and go so far beyond that belief that you would be a starving artist, but instead truly be aligned with your passion and purpose, truly be making that positive contribution that all these people rely on to have that nutrition and have it be easy and have it be affordable and meet all these needs. Uh, and to meet that by surrounding yourself with the right people, the right systems, the right marketing, the right sales processes, the right teams, leveraging your knowledge and your skill sets and your mindsets and your environments and various people that also do what they love to be able to reach and provide more value for more people so that we can now bring you to that seven figure mark and have a lifestyle that you love. From where you're at now, what are the key points you're seeing that, that will require? Well, I, I, just as far as like generally speaking, I think it still requires those same key elements, you know, the skill sets, the mindsets, and the environment. You know, right now I've got a six-figure environment, and that's awesome, you know. Um, but to level up, now I've got to really step up into a seven-figure environment, you know, start working with people who make seven, seven figures routinely, you know, who have that mindset that this is, you know, the, this is the way it is. People make seven figures, you know. I'm not quite to that level yet, so I've got to start bringing that into my environment. Um, you know, skill sets. There's a ton for me to learn to get to that level, you know, uh, and that's a lot of what you and I will be working with, I'm sure, you know, as, you know, we continue down this mentoring road. Um, but the mindset really is starting to envision, okay, once I've got this personal chef thing to where it's self-sustaining, regularly bringing in the six figures, and that's a solid thing, and I've got the right people in place, that's doing its own thing. That's going to be the heart of things. Let it just keep on beating and doing what it does without even having to think about it, you know. Then I can move on to, you know, some of my other friends in the industry who continue to struggle. I mean, I've worked long enough in the food service industry that I have other chefs and other line cooks and other, you know, front of house people that, man, I, I, they have such potential for this. And so to be able to take them, it's like, look, you know, I went from the 8.50 an hour line cook job, you know, to making six figures. If you're interested, I can show you how to do the same thing. Yeah, I mean, you've got the drive, you've got the passion, you've got the potential. Let me show, share this with you and teach you what it is that I now know having walked that path, you know, and just work with them on getting through some of those, you know, the mindsets that keep them there. Uh, you know, would, I can't think of anything really more rewarding than to take somebody that I've worked with in the past, you know, in the kitchen side by side and watch them get to the same level that I'm at now. You know, I mean, how awesome would that be, you know, to have them shift that mindset and realize, wow, there's so much more out there and this is so, you know, I mean, they just that. Yeah, what a cool thing. So that's where I'm looking at, you know, and then 
I mean, just as far as food goes, I've got tons of ideas. You know, right now I'm more or less local, but I would love to expand what I do, you know, across the country. You know, being able to provide good, healthy, nutritious meals to people all across the country and maybe around the world at one point, you know. And, and there's a lot of technical things to figure out there and how to make that work. But, you know, I've got some ideas and I, I can't wait to explore that. So, Beautiful. So the key point you shared in there that I love the most is uh, – the beauty of liberating yourself and then turning and liberating others from the same prison. So yeah. you were in a prison of, you know, starving artists uh -huh. believing that if you did what you loved, you would be hungry and you wouldn't be able to provide for your family and you've conquered that and you're taking that to an even higher level and then to turn around and help so many others to do the same thing. That's what it's all about, providing value, liberating ourselves, reaching the next level, helping the people behind us to do that again and again and again, and us continuing to do it ourselves. I know I continue. That, that's why I became a coach. That's why I became a consultant, because the coaches and consultants that I hired made such a tremendous impact in my life. I turn and help uh, others who are, are wanting to experience the same results that I've created. And I continually reach up to the others who have already created the results I'm wanting to create. And it creates this synergy of rather than each of us spending our whole lives trying to figure things out, uh, there, you know, there's things my coaches helped me over and over with that took me 10 years to try to solve on my own. And in a matter of just a fraction of that time, I get it solved with their help because they save energy by avoiding the pitfalls and the struggles that they had to go through to get there. So this chain of me being connected to my mentors and me connecting with the people that I'm meant to mentor uh, just streamlines the whole path up the mountain and we all get there so much more quickly and easily. So uh, with all that being said, what are some of the offerings that you have? So you, you prep food for people, you, you can do some drop shipping stuff, you do catering events. Um, tell, tell us about your main services as quickly as you can. Uh, and then how pe how can people get in contact with you if they're interested in having their food be easy and nutritious and perfectly balanced and all of that? Cool. Thanks for that opportunity. Uh, yeah, so the primary thing is the personal chef service. You know, once a week I deliver a cooler full of meals to you, um, depending on what your needs are. It can be anywhere from, uh, you know, just uh, five to ten meals a week to feeding you, you know, six meals a day. You know, that's pro athlete level stuff. Um, but it just it really depends on what your particular needs and requirements are. Uh, again, we work with a dietitian to make sure that everything's balanced according to what your health and nutrition goals are. Um, and it's it's healthy, nutritious, made from scratch food, local ingredients. Um, that's kind of the mainstay. Uh, I do I cater anything from a romantic dinner for two to you know massive parties of you know over a thousand people. So cater and it's always. I don't have a standard catering menu. I'm not a typical caterer. You know, usually they have their menu and it's like, okay, pick five items off of this, and that's not my deal. I want to find out what your event is, and then I want to create a menu that is specific to that that event and your tastes and your likes and you know what it is you're creating with that particular environment. Uh, so it's it's highly specialized. Um, work with you, work with your budget, and get it exactly what it is you want it to be. Um, and that's, I mean, I mean, those two things are kind of the mainstay. I, I, I do work with a couple clients right now just on, uh, you know, coaching as far as, you know, get, it's shifting those mindsets. You know, I've started to kind of work with some of the people from the restaurant industry, uh, and I've got a, a voiceover uh, artist that I've started working with too, and, you know, just working on some of his mindsets about, like, you know, yeah, you know, he quit his job just on a whim, um, you know, kind of took the same leap that I did, and I was like, okay, um, Maybe we should have talked before you did that, but yay that you did it. And let's, you know, now that you're here, let's let's see where we go. Uh, you know, so I, I enjoy doing that too, and and he's he's had some really really awesome success uh, in in his professional and personal life just working there too. So that's basically what I offer as far as getting in touch with me. Um, Facebook is a great method. Uh, you're welcome to reach out to me on the phone eight zero one two four three two three five zero, or you can email me at chef j looney. That's Chef, the letter J, L-O-O-N-E-Y, at gmail.com. Beautiful. So, uh, and on Facebook, what's your full name so they can find you easily? Uh, on Facebook, it's uh, either Chef J. Looney or J. L. Looney. Awesome.
So I want to make a couple key points here. One is, guys, like so many times you think you need to wait till you have a beautiful logo and a beautiful website and a whole brand established and you got to make sure you know exactly what you're doing and have a solid biz business plan before you do it. Jay, did we spend any time on any of that? No, not, not a, no. <laughs> or, and. Yeah, back in later. <laughs> yeah. So that's more important down the line. Why not have a business that pays for that instead of waiting and being stuck and then saying, well, I, got, I don't have the money. I need to come up with all this stuff. And you waste six months putting all that together with money you don't have versus just going out and providing a solution in the world, making the income, and having the business pay for its own branding and you know logos and design work and all that other stuff later on. Doesn't that make a lot more sense? Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I mean, the truth is, you know, it's all well and good to have a, a slick looking brand and logo and business card and anything and everything like that. But if you can't back it up, if you, I mean, you know, if you spend all your money doing that, what's the point? Yeah. You know, for me, it was way more important to do what I wanted to do. And then, I mean, people are just going to inherently get that, you know, and, and I found that time and time again. People get my passion for food, they understand it. They don't need a business card to tell them what I do, you know. I, I hand out maybe 50 business cards a year, if that. Yep. You know, it's it's more about them knowing what it is I do and who I am from a very authentic standpoint. Yep, and then from that point, delivering such tremendous value. That at the end of the day, people don't care what you're about all that shiny stuff. They depend. They right. care about what value are you providing. So, with that being said. Jay, how important has the coaching been to your success? Oh, it, it's been absolutely fundamental. I mean, there, the truth is, there's no way that I, I would still be doing what I was doing. You know, making that, being thrilled to make an extra thousand bucks a month with one client. You know, had you and I never connected, I'd be like, okay, this is where I'm at, and you know, still eking out a living doing that. You know, but having worked with you and just having somebody from that outside perspective, you know. It, just be able to see, look, man, you know, maybe there's potential in this area for you, and here's what it could look like. You know, just having that conversation with you and really being able to dig in and be like, yeah, it could look like that. And that could be a really, really cool thing. You know, here's the potential there. And you know, so that was just, you know, that alone, that one conversation was just it totally shattered any paradigms I may have had about working in the food industry and really got me excited to do more and be more. Beautiful. So a couple of critical pieces to that and your success has been mostly on your part. So it's been critical that I shared some things with you and help you break through some things and look at things differently and empower you and structure some things. But a lot of it and far majority depended on you. So you've shown up. You've been willing to take those risks. You've been willing to take that action. You've been willing to take those leaps. You've been just ruthless about execution and follow through. So that falls on you, and it always does, on your ability to follow through and do the work. Um, but like you say, the critical outside perspective and all of that. So uh, you, over the course, we had a, maybe five, six conversations over the course of the last five months. Mm -hmm. And if you were to put a number to that, like what will that make you over the course of the next 12 months based on what you've been experiencing so far? Well, it's going to easily carry me into the six-figure territory. I would guess uh, this time next year, I'll be somewhere around the quarter million mark. Maybe you know, maybe even bigger than that. So, and and that represents uh, you know a little more than doubling what my business is right now. And and I don't. The truth is, I don't even see why I couldn't triple that. You know, yeah. bring me to the three fifty four hundred thousand dollar mark. Beautiful. And how much have you increased so far? So as a result of those five conversations, how much additional income has been added to your bottom line? Uh, somewhere in the ballpark of about six to seven grand a month. So five, six conversations over the course of five months has increased your income by, did you say six or seven grand a month? Yeah. Well, that pretty much says it all. <laughs> It really does. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, so you're starting a group with me, uh, and so basically those those five six conversations was just like, hey, let's get you in a position so you can play with me on a bigger level. Yes. Uh, when we first talked, 
uh, I love money, but I love people more than money, and I was about just providing value to you, and you showed up and, and applied what I taught you, and we've brought you from that position to being able to play with me on a bigger level. You put the money down. We're launching a, 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 a whole deeper level of experience with you, so we did what we've done with you so far on this, you know, just a shoestring budget and minimal amount of time and effort, and or not time and effort, but just involvement and exchanges, we've kept it as, as shoestring as possible. So now we're moving into some heavy support, going all in and all of that. That starts next week, Monday the 17th, first group training, breakthrough, accountability, clarity, all of that. Very excited about that. What would your advice be to others considering joining the, that group or participating in my coaching programs? Step the fuck up and do it. You know, I mean, the truth is the return on investment has been so far beyond anything I could have imagined, you know. And regardless of how much money you think you do or don't have to invest in this, the investment in yourself is always worth it. You know, that's just the bottom line. You know, the the money that you know hasn't been easy to bring together to invest in this has paid off. You know, tenfold if not more. So yeah, just just take the leap and do it, man. You know, you're worth it. Beautiful. Thank you, Jay. So uh, to you guys out there watching this, there's a couple things coming up in recent, in, in, in not recent, but real soon that I'm offering. We got a Cancun New Year's break, Badass Breakthrough Adventure. Uh, totally off the charts, amazing uh, event we're putting on in Cancun. Uh, actually a little north uh, over by Playa del Carmen. Uh, we're going to be doing just some epic, epic stuff. If you're interested in that, make sure you message me or contact me in one way or another. Uh, also, if you're ready to take your business to the next level, you're ready to thrive, and you're ready to take really every aspect of your life, your health, your relationships, your spirituality, your sense of purpose and meaning and fulfillment and joy, uh, as well as your finances to the next level over and over again, my whole message and purpose is to show people how we are limitless and that we are the only thing. The, the stuff right here is the only stuff that sets limits for us. The sky isn't the limit. Your mind is the limit. And I don't care who you are. I don't care where you are. If you have the dedication and the work ethic and the willingness and the commitment to execute and to align yourself, you can have anything you set your mind to. So if you, if you would like to participate in one-on-one -on -one coaching or group coaching or a live event or have any one of those experiences that will blast you off and empower you to truly create the life that you love, reach out. Um, and just my final message would be, and, and Jay, maybe tune in and see if there's anything else you want to share before we wrap this up. My final message is, again, I don't care who you are. I don't care where you are. You are meant for greatness. Mm -hmm. And you are meant to live the life of your dreams. And you're either going to live your life half-assed and you're just going to get by and then you're going to die or you're going to step up and get in the game and play full out and create a life that you absolutely love. You can do that. I've done it. Jay's well into the process of doing it. I've helped thousands of people to do this. We've got it down to an art and a science. Uh, it's a beautiful process. It's very liberating. It's very freeing. It's very empowering and fulfilling. brings so much joy. So I implore you, please, believe in yourself, invest in yourself, do what it takes. A half-assed life isn't worth it. And you may, maybe, maybe you only have one shot in this lifetime, don't waste it. Reach your full potential. Live up to your full capacity. Be the greatest you you can be. That's all I have to say. Jay, any last words before we wrap this up? You know, just the last thought that came to me is, uh, as you were saying, that is, you know, when I was uh, when I first got back into food, working on that line for 10 hours a day and 110 degrees, that felt like hard work, you know, and there was a lot, you know, of mental uh, involved in that. It's like, oh, you know, I'm working hard, I'm working hard, I'm working these long shifts and everything, you know. Um, looking back, that wasn't hard work. That was the easy work, you know. The hard work is like the mental stuff where it's like you get beyond, you know, those mindsets and and just really open up your world to what's out there and then do the work to get there. That's the hard work, you know, and it's absolutely worth it. And it's way more rewarding than just busting your ass for 10 hours straight on a hot line, you know. So 
yeah, work hard, do the work, but do the right work. Beautiful, Cher. Thank you. And the last thing I want to add to that is the blessing that comes as a result of what heals inside of you and what aligns inside of you when you face those fears and those doubts and those insecurities and those barriers and the resistance that tries to keep you small and you overcome those one at a time and pretty soon what your capacity might have been to only lift five pounders in the beginning and over time you can lift 500 pounders. That is what life is about. It's about being your capacity and potential. It's about realigning with your greatness that you truly are. It's about giving up all the bullshit stories and fears and doubts and insecurities and coming to terms with all of that and empowering yourself to live your best possible life. And the process aligns you. The process heals you. The process empowers you. If nothing else, do it. If you don't care about money very much, do it for the spiritual alignment of being who you truly are and accomplishing what you came to accomplish and living up to your full capacity and potential. I think that's it for today. Thank you so much, Jay, for joining us. Thank you, everybody else, for joining us. If you're watching the replay, reach out. Let us know how we can best serve you. Uh, if you're interested in all and in, in losing weight, being in shape, uh, saving time, saving money, having your meals prepped for you, having it be easy, and devoting that time to more important things and reaching those physical goals that you have, reach out to Jay. If you're ready to really break through, if you're in the restaurant business and you're ready to take it to the next level or food business in any way, reach out to him. He can help to empower you tremendously in that way as, as well. And if you're seriously ready to be limitless and live a life of limitlessness, reach out to me. I hope you all have an amazing and create an amazing day. This is Christopher John Stubbs, creator of Limitless, the ultimate human journey, reminding you to create the best life possible for you. Have an amazing day.